Yes, kicking us off, samples from phones of 20 doctors have revealed more than 2,000 microbes of germs. So this is your bacteria, your fungi, your viruses, pretty much saying that your phones are really, really dirty and it's almost recommended to clean them about five times a day. Right. So this is going, I guess this is the same kind of feeling people expected when they found out escalator handles or elevator buttons had all germs on them. It is coming out now that phones are quite dirty, quite filthy, quote unquote, a petri dish for germs and it should be cleaned regularly. How many times do you reckon you've cleaned it since having it? <laughs> How many times do I clean my phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, barely ever. I don't know. Maybe once, right? Really? Yeah, I don't really clean it with a cloth or anything. Right, I probably do it like once a week because I've got the clear case. I can see how dirty it gets. Yeah, see, and it I like irks me. Never do it. Yeah, okay. Right, so yeah, definitely something. Did you say people... five times a day though? Yeah, five that's times ridiculous. a day. So that's the no guy. No one's got that much time on their hands. Well, that's the guy publishing the articles, so he's obviously going to be at the top of it. Is definitely the most concerned, but yeah, he recommended about five times a day grabbing a cloth and wiping your phone. In other news, over in Denmark, scientists have developed a new drug that mimics the effects of running a 10-kilometer marathon, but with no effort. So one of these crazy <laughs> ideas that you can sit on the couch, pop a pill, and then get the same metabolic reaction to your body as if you're running a marathon and it's great for people who have a weak heart or maybe they have weak limbs and bones and things like that and they can't exercise that much and it's trying to mimic those effects for weight loss. There you go. Hey, Callum, turning to sport, looking at the Sheffield Shield, New South Wales versus South Australia over in the cricket. We uh, had Travis Head hit 30 with two sixes. Alex Carey got 90 runs, but uh, Nathan Lyon sparked the comeback for New South Wales, getting a three for three Whoa. wickets last night. Yeah, on the game. So currently SA trail by 139 runs. We're in stumps. Jeez, we're in good hands. Callum, I'm not sure if you've heard about this around the office. It's the latest mm. bit of office gossip. Oh, so, good. Yeah. <laughs> love a bit of office gossip. You and know, the, I do. I know the Fresh fam loves a bit of office gossip as well. Uh, our boss, Sophie, she's kind of almost been catfished the other day. Oh, wow. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. get the cameras out. The TV show is getting a revival. <laughs> so what happened? She, she was talking to a colleague of ours, Diego, on Snapchat, right? Mm. And they were talking for weeks over Snapchat. And then one day, Sophie came up to Diego in the office and said something that they had been talking about on Snapchat. Diego's response is, huh? Mm. She's like, you know, like that thing. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Turns out some random guy, also named Diego, had just added Sophie's Snapchat. Whoa. She, she added back, assuming it's Diego from, from the work. office. Yeah. And they've been talking for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what, messaging messaging Snapchat Diego? Oh, have you got those files done? Have you got those reports? What's I, the other guy thinking? I yeah, sure, I guess. no idea how it went on for that long, but somehow they managed weeks of conversation you, without mentioning work once. Do you reckon Internet Diego, fake Diego, thinks fake that Diego. all of the office jargon is some sort of flirting. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I got the documents. Role play. <laughs> you want to see me in your office? Sure. <laughs> What's going on? Surely someone had to realise at some point. <laughs> well, eventually they did. I think it went on for two to three weeks. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so plenty of conversations to, to be had there. Uh, curious, have you ever been catfished? So, not in that sense, but I guess we do want to extend this to, it could be things like marketplace, have you bought something, got catfished, it's not the product you want, mm. stuff like that, it could be cars, whatever. I remember I bought a keyboard online, like a musical keyboard, and a bunch of the notes were broken, so you couldn't play everything that you wanted to play. Oh, really? So, half the keyboard was busted. <laughs> so, if someone were to request, hey, play chopsticks, it'd be like... Do Sorry. another one. <laughs> Go on, give me another one. I just, uh, that's too easy. It looks like you're really bad at the yeah. keyboard. <laughs> I only operate on two notes, two fingers. <laughs> hey, we want to throw it to you, Fresh Fam. Have you ever been catfished? It doesn't have to be from the dating scene. It can be you were catfished on Facebook Marketplace yes. like Callum was. Maybe you were catfished into the car that you wanted to go mm. by. You went and saw it and it was just completely different. A lemon. How about Timu, the classic getting getting stuff online, it comes back smaller, comes back bigger. There are so many different examples of getting catfished. Plenty of texts coming through right now on the text line. Someone said, met up with a bloke on a dating site who claims to be 30. My 
my age. Mm. Definitely was 50 and wearing a baseball cap to look younger Whoa. from Alicia. Yeah, rocking the baseball cap. Skateboard <laughs> under the arm as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a car. Hop on the handles of my BMX. <laughs> Come hang right. out in my mum's basement. <laughs> <Yeah>. I got <laughs> vinyls. <laughs> <laughs> that one is dodgy. I love this one here. Uh, bought a terrific car recently from Marketplace three months ago. Love it. Took it for a service last week. Need two new rear shockers. Found out not only are they $1,400 each just Whoa. for the parts, but the manufacturer does not sell them anymore and there is no part available, so I may as well set it on fire. <laughs> Probably don't do that. It's a 2017 model, so not very old. That sucks. A 2017 model, they're not even making the parts for it anymore. Yeah, what a That's chip. That's rough. I yeah. feel like you would get catfish with cars a fair bit. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Hey, Justin's texted in here saying, I matched with a girl on Tinder. All that happened was I got a pre-written response and finally a link to promote her OnlyFans. Jeez, heartbroken, Justin. Send my regards to you. <laughs> Love this one here. I was talking to a guy on Tinder, talking for a few weeks, and I asked to hang out a few times, but he always had some sort of reason not to. Finally got uh, him to see me, and it was a completely different person. He used his friend's photos and name from Julia. Do you reckon it was like a wingman account set up? And Maybe. And he... <laughs> <laughs> he fell for Julia. That sounds like a rom-com right Well, there. it almost sounds like you should just go for the friend whose pictures they actually are. <laughs> Teared up with the actual mate. <laughs> Got another text here. One of those scorching hot summers a few years back bought a kiddie pool off Marketplace for me to have beers in. Mm. Full of holes, had to drive to the beach. Holes in the story, holes in the kiddie pool. It's all <laughs> happening there. <laughs> and we got this one here. I was messaged by someone uh, on Facebook claiming to be Chase from Chase and Status. <laughs> who asked for $1,000 to fly back to the UK. Obviously not real and just wanted to scare me to get some money. Yeah, because Chase from Chase's status would not be in a financial drought where he couldn't get back home, I'm Is sure. Is his name actually Chase? <laughs> what, is the other guy's name Status? Yeah. <laughs> I've done a quick Google on the wiki. Hey, we're heading over to Christie's Beach. we got Tina on the line. Tina, have you been catfished? Tell us what happened. I have been catfished. I got absolutely gypped. Mm. I bought a packet of biscuits, keen for a little sweet treat. I opened it up and there was nothing in it. Nothing? <laughs> no biscuits whatsoever, not one. No, and it broke my heart. I got all the way home, found out there was nothing in there. Tina, what kind of bickies are we talking about? Chocolate teddy bears, chocolate scotch fingers? Chocolate scotch fingers, actually. Oh, yeah. Wow. At least yeah. uh, the best kind of biscuit in light my on, eyes. Light on the calories, I yeah. guess. <laughs> <laughs> nothing <laughs> in there. I'd be absolutely <laughs> livid. Those things aren't cheap either. Yeah, that's a rough one. I would rather get catfished on Tinder <laughs> than have someone rob me of my biscuits. <laughs> Our thoughts and prayers go out to you, Tina. This would have to be one of the craziest finds I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> And it comes from a cemetery over in Portsmouth in England. Yeah, a bloke right. has just got fined. He's in trouble. He's in the cemetery with his mates and he's started doing this around the place. <laughs> Giving a bit of a ghostly <laughs> ghostly sound effect over there. Where is he, a Scooby-Doo villain? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I think he Get had... out of my cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure he had a bit of a ghost mask going on, but what possesses someone to just go in a cemetery, start doing this? You know, does he have a girlfriend at home just being like, oh, where is he tonight? I've cooked dinner. Oh, he's out scaring the locals, the he's, villagers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going out to play social sport, yeah. hon. <laughs> Little do you know your boyfriend's a complete weirdo that hangs out in cemeteries <laughs> trying to spook people. Maybe he's got a bunch of cash hidden somewhere in a grave there and he has to scare people away. I've got to protect it. Yeah. <laughs> You know what the fine was? <laughs> what? 42 bucks. You know, that's the spookiest fine <laughs> amount at all. <laughs> Going up to a cashier and not being able to pay for something is a scene straight out of hell. I mean, the scrambling, the panic. And usually, to be fair, it's a cashier that really doesn't care. Probably giving them a load off anyway. <laughs> they like the relaxation <laughs> of having a little bit of a pause, a bit of a break. Yeah. But it is always a little bit awkward. And uh, it's, it's because of all the people behind you. Yeah, yeah. And I you're halting them. Just the other night, I was at Foodland and I was mm. behind a guy who couldn't remember his pin code oh, trying God. to do the weekly shop. 
And I, I, all I had was a frozen pizza. Just yelling at him, use the face ID. <laughs> I ended up having to go to a different line. Yeah, <laughs> awkward for him too, seeing everyone dip off behind him. Yeah. I must be pretty slow. but uh, It's the worst feeling. Yeah, and this happened with my roommate the other day. I was lounging out at home on a Saturday. Right. Doing absolutely nothing. As you do. Very nice. Yeah. And she comes barging home, demanding that I go to the shops with her. <laughs> Like, what, why? Is, what is the image you're trying to paint of your poor housemate? Comes barging home, demands some, me to pay for with it. Some warlock <laughs> just <laughs> bashing through the door. Rent is due. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But yeah, uh, I have to go to the shops because uh, she has tried to pay for everything and it has not gone through. So I had to use my card. Right. So what? She left. Did you have to redo the whole shop when nah. you got back there? So when we went back to the shop there the and uh, went up to the table, I had an inspection of everything that was left by the cashier at the table. Uh, the cashier, she left everything for her. Right. And it was just the assortment of Fruit Loops and, you know, chocolate <laughs> wafers and stuff like that. So Imagine it wasn't that. an important shop. <laughs> Imagine it the didn't em- have to be rushed back to nah. the shop to pay for it. Imagine the embarrassing, yes, I'm here to claim the Cocoa Pops and <laughs> all the other junk assortments. So couldn't pay for it. Had to go all the way back to a massive drive about 15 minutes to and from just to pay for all this stuff. What couldn't you pay for, Adelaide? I had uh, a similar deal recently. I was in a nightclub probably a couple of months ago now, mm. and my phone had died. Yeah. And I thought, crap, how am I going to get home with a dead phone? So, you know, I, I didn't have any cash. Yeah. It's, it's a digital age. I need to transfer money around uh, to be able to even, you know, pay for a taxi. So I've gone to the bartender there, and I've asked if I could charge my phone, to which my respo- their response was, Oh, yeah, no worries. Just 10 bucks, thanks. Well, they wanted to charge you for the charger. $10 to charge my phone at this <laughs> nightclub. Is that even a thing? Or is that just some dodgy bartender saying, oh, yeah, just chuck me a tenner and then I'll do it for you? Don't know. Surely that's Dunno. not a thing at the actual nightclub. I told uh, What I told him, I was desperate to get home at this point. I was, I was done for the evening. I was like, look, I can't pay you because my phone's dead. But if I charge my phone, then I can pay you. And they said... No, 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 I need to get the $10 before I can put it on charge. I'm like, how am I meant to get home with a dead phone? I can't, yeah. otherwise I just stay here and I'm not going to be spending any money. You may as well charge my phone. Will you take a napkin with IOU <laughs> scribbled on it with a nearby pen? Here's my home address. <laughs> <laughs> Come find me if you need the money. Eventually they charged my phone. I split before char- they charged me 10 bucks because yeah, I'm not doing that. Good stuff. <laughs> Rebel without a cause. Simpl- simply won't do it. <laughs> Somebody texted through here saying, a few years ago... My card wasn't working when I went to buy toilet paper. Someone nice enough ended up buying it for me from Elijah. See, that is a necessity. That's something that you will have to pay for. And kudos to the person behind them. Good Samaritan over there. (laughs) Uh, Got this one here. I've had a few payments for my gym bounce back and had to deal with the embarrassment of scanning my membership at the front, then scrambling to make payments so they let me in. (sighs) You don't want to be yeah. a scrambler. Nah. Don't don't bring yourself to scrambling level. <laughs> <laughs> Especially at the gym. <laughs> this one uh, is, yeah, this one I think applies to most people of this age. Uh, I'm a broke 20-year-old. I can't pay for anything. Mm, yeah. That's how it is when you're 20. Wouldn't expect most 20-year-olds to be able to pay for much. <laughs> Love this one here from Harry. Both my front windows of my car don't roll down. Every time I need to go through anything that requires me to open a window, I need to open my door. I'm too stingy to get it replaced. <laughs> that happened to a guy who works here, a social media man, Gavin, his old car. The window used to not go down, so he used to drive up uh, way past the toll gate, yep. open the car, get out of the car, scan his little thing, and get back into the car. It just seems like a hassle. It's a whole process. <laughs> but then again, I also don't know how uh, how expensive it can be to fix. <laughs> hey, got a big text come through here. About 15 years ago, I was at work at a gala event that had an auction during the night. Needless to say, the drinks package was thoroughly enjoyed. I woke up the next morning and said to my sister, did I win a holiday to Bali last night? Cool. She turned to me and said, oh, that's what you remember. Not exactly. The happy lady down the back in the pink dress bid for a two-night stay in a high marsh island for eight people that included a wheelbarrow of beer. 
And then when you were asked to pay for your win, your card declined and we all had to chip in to cover you. You owe each of us at the table Jeez. $300. You'd wake up thinking, was that a nightmare last night <laughs> that I have to fork out 300 bucks for all of my mates? Well, she woke up thinking she won it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, for a mate's birthday, we went to buy a round of 10 shots for our group. We went way over budget. The birthday boy ended up paying. <laughs> what a birthday ruiner, right? <laughs> That is the worst. <laughs> Having a party is all well and good, but there's some logistical stuff, though, and what a pain it is when you're doing a house party and all the businessy stuff that you have to handle. The businessy stuff the business of having end. a party. Okay. Exactly. So... Yeah. One of them, one of them that grinds me a little bit. So my roommate and I had a party on Saturday. Roommate or secretary? <laughs> <laughs> Monica Lewinsky kind of style. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it was uh, just my roommate, mate of mine. Uh, so we, we were both doing a belated birthday together, yeah. uh, belated 25th, and we decided to do a hangover, the hangover, like the movie kind of theme, Vegas. So a few poker tables, Tiger in the bathroom, kind of stuff like that. Of course, remember to gamble responsibly of course and we're doing this theme for the party and it got to the point where we thought we should probably give some notes to the close surrounding neighbors just to say hey look heads up there's a party that's going to happen in a few days time could be a little bit loud but it'll wrap up maybe 12 30 okay hopefully yeah that was never gonna happen yeah. <laughs> If I know your business. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're pretty pretty in check. But uh, So I had to hand out this uh, note to one of the neighbours. One of them was particularly awkward because I'd had a party the week before. So not only did I have to apologise to him for that one. What, did they kick up a stink about the last one? Yeah, because he yelled over the fence. He was like, oh. oi! <laughs> I turned around, I was like, what? And... He's like, oh, you are being really loud. I had to apologise then. And then a few days later, of course... Okay, went over said, hey, sorry for the fun the other night. By the way, there's an even worse one coming Saturday. I would hate to be your neighbour. I would too. I would too. I know I'm going to get karma when I'm 40 years old and I'm living next to some idiot. Yeah, yeah. It'll be so, your son. Yeah, probably. <laughs> In the granny flat. So I had to schmooze him and whatever. But I had these notes made by my roommate Tamara to give to the neighbours. Sure, okay. These yeah. notes pretty much outlining when it's all going to finish. It's sure. going to be a little bit loud, stuff like that. Just the logistics yeah. of the business. Yeah. Oh, exactly right. And after the party, so a few days later this week, I've actually had an inspection of what the notes say because I didn't look at it before. You didn't read the note that I you hands it out. I didn't read it. So I just wait, grabbed you, it. You've been given a note to hand out. You haven't read it. You've handed it out. It could have said anything. Could have said anything, but I trust my roommate that it's all good and it's going to have all the stuff for that night. I thought, yep, just give it to the neighbours. All good. I've had a look at it. She said it's an engagement party. <laughs> just because she wants... She, her theory was... No if one's going to bust out yeah, an engagement party. If it's a sentimental engagement party, no one's going to call the cops or anything like that and we'll get away with it. There were people on the front lawn holding a baby attached to their <laughs> chest like Alan from The Hangover. Not a real baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> what word got you in trouble? Yep. Bit of a risky topic, but we're looking at this story that's come out where a common Aussie phrase has gotten a retail worker in a bit of strife. Yeah. So this woman, she works in the deli section of a fruit and veg store and customer comes up to her and she used the term mate, as most people do, being like, G'day, mate, how can I help you? Or how can I help you, mate? Of course. Something along those lines, to which the customer replied to her, Can I tell you something? Don't call me mate. Whoa. Yeah. Seems to be un-Australian, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, got, got, got offended. Uh, so she apologised, said, I'm sorry if I've offended you. Didn't mean anything by it. And then the customer replies saying, mm, it's just unprofessional for the term to be used in the workplace. Yeah, the right. term mate to Oof. be used in the workplace. Offended. What a stick in the mud. <laughs> offended by the word mate. Do you reckon this person watches Crocodile Dundee and thinks, geez, this should be MA. <laughs> this should be an R-rated movie. <laughs> what the, an unprofessional guy. <laughs> all the profanity in that Crocodile Dundee flick. The mate was off the charts. <laughs> Mick Dundee. <laughs> Public enemy number one. Yeah. Imagine living your life thinking mate is really, really offensive to the point where you tell a cashier, hey, you need to stop that. And unfortunately, I guess, you know, if you report it to their boss, you're going to have to implement it there. Otherwise, other people could say the same thing. Yeah, a bunch of people on Reddit uh, were saying, giving their point of view on it. So uh, somebody saying, you know, it's casual, but it's not unprofessional, rude. Australian culture is a casual culture. 
Customers who find the word mate problematic are looking for something to whinge about. Right, and what else do Get you on. want? Do you want to be called cobber at the shops? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> well, there's worse, there's worse, more embarrassing things, right? <laughs> yeah, but we're taking a risk here. We're going to the text line. What word got you in trouble? Somebody's work, said they work in hospo events spe- uh, specifically and said that's skibbity to a 70-year-old and then got an earful from their manager. Really? I mean, skibbity is annoying, sure, annoying. but is a 70-year-old going to go out and complain about that? Like, why? Oh, oh, so why, why, why are you even saying it to a 70-year-old? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, sorry. Yeah, just I'm to... sorry to side with the manager on this one, but like, the 70-year-old's not going to know what's going on. <laughs> saying that skibbity, it could sound like an insult. Maybe, yeah. 70-year-old's going to be absolutely baffled on that one. This one here, one of my nurse friends got in trouble for continuously saying slay to patients. Ugh. For example, oh, your blood pressure's slay. Nobody understood what she meant and she scared one of the elderly patients. Yeah. Yeah, look, I'd be annoyed by that as well. My bread, po- my blood pressure is not slay. Just tell me what's the <laughs> over and please. under. <laughs> These, this is a thing that actually needs to be specific <laughs> yeah. and not mentioned on slayer meters. Just go for it. How about this one? Back in, year, back in year 12, yelled out, shut the front door and got berated by the teacher. Mm. Yeah, good one. Good one. You would. He would call a work colleague a loser under my breath. Got an HR report. <laughs> Loser's such a That's once a again scathing word. A primary school one, but if you bring it to the workplace, yeah, some people are going to get a little bit cross with you. I think being called a loser is worse than being called a lot of profanity. <laughs> yeah, cuts really, deep. It cuts deep, doesn't it? Does, it? Doesn't it? Uh, somebody is texted in here. I called my teacher a twat in year three. Didn't really know what it meant, but I'd heard my dad say it about people he didn't like, so it felt fitting. Yeah, usually comes from the parents. And it's always awkward when the parents get called in for the meeting with the teachers and they say, you know, your son's Where have they heard twat. this word? Where Gee, they heard I don't it? know. Oh, TV. <laughs> yeah, baffling, isn't I it? I blame the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> always blame the Simpsons. <laughs> Morning, fellas. I'm originally from Victoria. My partner's from here, and she hates it when I say Radelaide. Radelaide. I've heard a few people don't get around the Radelaide bit, polarizing here <laughs> another one here apart from the obvious words i got sent off a social soccer match for calling someone on the other team a limp noodle after i scored a goal on him yeah not the worst thing you'd hear on the soccer pitch i'm sure nah so, yeah. strange one to get sent off for work in retail instead of pair of shoes looked ugly on a bloke he kicked a fuss i just wanted to save him from buying the wrong pair from will <laughs> <laughs> you I mean, can't say that. Honesty is the best policy, I guess. <laughs> Would you just be like, hey, why don't you try this pair? Yeah. <laughs> don't be like, be a, wow, they're ugly on There might be a better pair for you. Yeah, there's other alternatives for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap things up here. I was doing a presentation in Year 8 Science. Said... <laughs> said orgasm instead of organism yep. in front of my entire class. Being an all-boys school... Did not live that one down. Someone did that in my year eight science class and I have not forget it. People do not forget (laughs) that stuff. (laughs) Hanging out with Tom and Callum. I reckon there's no better feeling than receiving an extra item with your food delivery. Oh, sure. When you get an Uber Eats, they, you know, get some Asian food, they slap in a few more spring rolls. Yeah, Crazy. yeah. Crazy. You get a couple of, uh, you get you get a free nuggets or something. Great stuff. Get a free drink. Nah. It's the best feeling in the world because you, you feel like you've cheated the system. And it happens so rarely that when it does happen, the first thing you do is you brag, mm. right? You tell your friends. You, you, you Go straight, straight to the group chat, boys. You'll never believe it. Free dim sims. <laughs> <laughs> it must be my lucky day. Well, one bloke is fuming about his extra bonus item that came with his dominoes. Posting to Twitter, he was disgusted by the thought of receiving a free pizza cutter right. with his pizza. So he, he got a pepperoni pizza. Pizza cutter's been left on top of the pizza. He's disgusted by the idea. He's so upset. Uh, you know, obviously a mistake because the pizza was already cut. Mm. So it's not like they gave him the pizza cutter and be like, cut it yourself. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't an insult. <laughs> no, you no, know, no. You do it. No, no. The, the pizza was pre-cut. They've they've left the pizza cutter in there. And this dude is livid. He's, Why is he complaining? Does he think it's dirty or he just doesn't know where it's come from? No idea. He's posted to Twitter saying, uh, why the hell did you send me this? I don't remember ordering this item with my double topping medium pizza. <laughs> and then follows it up by saying... Um, Y'all better come get this pizza cutter before I sell it on eBay. It's times are tough. What are you doing? And why are you selling just... it? That, that's a good quality. You know <laughs> that's a good quality pizza cutter. You know the amount of pizzas they're cutting. That's yeah. going to be one of the primo pizza cutters. I'm washing that and I'm keeping it. It's a wild situation as well where you bring this to Twitter and, of course, this is going to hit the media storm 
all the way in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> now you just look like an idiot. Yeah, well, I mean, yes, there, there has been a storm, a storm of comments on his Twitter post with people saying, man, you got to be more grateful. That's a free gift. For someone else saying, I'd love to get a free pizza cutter mm. with my pizza. Another person saying, that's better than any toy you'd ever get with a Happy Meal. Jeez, all these fights over this one pizza cutter causing the destruction and chaos for this guy's <laughs> life. He is <laughs> not going to be able to walk out the house now. <laughs> Moving into a new neighbourhood can be scary, a little bit daunting. You don't know what's around, who's there, especially in America. I guess there's those few spots that are a bit rough around the edges. You have a few gangs, things like that. Yeah. And this is what's happened with a couple that's moved to Chicago. Mm, Chicago's big gangland territory yep. too. Yes, it is. So they're a little bit on their toes already. They've gone into this area there where there's a few gangs around and stuff like that. And they've come across this symbol that's all around their suburb. It's on their house. It's on street poles, Like graffiti. Yeah, like graffiti. And it says TTPD. And it's done in kind of a graphic kind of way, a little bit like graffiti. Right. And it's everywhere in the suburb. And they're a bit scared by it. And rightfully so. They think it's, you know... Like a could gang be, sign or something be, like that? Could be a gang sign or prompting a home invasion, you know, targeting where which houses have this symbol all across them. Yeah. And they're only new to it. So they've posted it on social media being like, guys, what the hell? What gang is what this? What is this? Yeah. Turns out it's a Swifty gang. What do you mean it's a Swifty gang? <laughs> so it's just a bunch <laughs> of... they got their own tag now? <laughs> so... This is how crazy the Swifty gang has taken over the world. I mean, Taylor Swift has so many followers already, but yes, she has this group of cronies now, these <laughs> kids going around <laughs> graffitiing, but TTPD is off, uh, it's an acronym for our album, The Tortured Poets Department. Right. So that's what it stands for. <laughs> And I feel like the telltale sign is that it's all done in chalk. They said, oh, on our house, they've done orange chalk well, for this sign. Swifties would, wouldn't, wouldn't break the law. No, of course <laughs> they're, not. They're Swifties. So, yeah, chalk, it just rubs away. But were they not looking at it thinking, what gang is, you know, going back to kindergarten? Using the chalk. 